Hey, welcome to Mixed Media Creations. It's me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Follow me on Instagram, www.instagram.com backslash Creative Katie. Don't forget to share my YouTube channel and my Instagram with your creative friends. Today we have a mixed media canvas tutorial. I'm really excited about this one. It turned out absolutely lovely. I've called it Not All Stars Belong to the Sky. So I am using a 11 by 14 canvas and I grabbed my gel prints and colored papers in blues and green tones because I'm doing kind of a watery theme background. And I'm just ripping the edges of these sheets uh, because I don't like the straight edges and putting them around the canvas. This is going to set the color scheme for my canvas. And I find by spending time ripping this, no matter how things turn out at the end, whether some of this shows or doesn't show, I find that it really imprints in your mind the colors that you want to use. And it limits them down the road. So I'm just kind of getting an idea of what I want and I'm trying some of these and, you know, it's just very instinctual. I like different shapes and sizes. Here I've decided to add some maps in there because I like the, the yellowy green that's in there. I also like to use different types of papers. So some is thicker paper, mixed media paper. Some is on um, colored paper towel, some is on colored coffee filters, tissue paper. So then I am just using my matte medium, liquid matte medium, and I'm just adhering down all of these papers. And, you know, they're not really going to end up where I had them. That's just kind of giving me a rough idea and gets me playing. And here I might edit out, like there's a couple pieces that I just decided I didn't really like the colors. I like if I'm going to have a piece in there, I want, you know, three or five of the same prints. Now using gel prints or colored papers or collage sheets that you may have created or purchased allows you to have some pattern as well as the color. Now, my goal with this one is to use this as a color scheme. Sometimes I've done this same technique, and in the end, I, you don't really see a whole lot of what you put down. You also get a lot of texture from these different papers and um, from layering them, and it adds a lot of interest to the finished canvas. So my idea here, what I did know was that I was going to do kind of under the water. So I wanted blue green and I was going to do something with starfish, but I wasn't exactly sure where this was going to go. Some of the, my decisions hadn't been made. And you can see when I go around the edges, I just kind of bend the paper and I'm wrapping it around the canvas because my idea is that this canvas would not be framed and the picture and the details kind of wrap around the outside. This is just a narrow canvas, um, but that would look really nice on a wider one. Now, everything that I'm doing here, you can do on an art journal page using mixed media or watercolor paper, if that's what you have. You can also do it on canvas board. My job here, what I'm trying to do is just really, you know, mix and match, get some colorful darks and lights, build texture, Leave some of the white space because I do have a plan for that. And don't be afraid to turn your canvas. Now I'm coming in with my archival ink and my script stamp 
and I'm doing the edges as well because I want this to wrap around the outside. Now this is the Crafters Workshop stencil. It's snake skin, but it occurs to me that it has some interesting patterns in it. So I'm going to use it kind of underwater and I'm using the Crafters Workshop light and fluffy modeling paste, which I love. And I'm just using a credit card or key card to put the modeling paste through the stencil. And I want this over most of the, the page or canvas. If you don't like how it works or gets too messy, just scrape it off, use a baby wipe, and start over. Now the modeling paste will take paint in a, few, in a couple more steps down the road, a little differently than any of the other parts of the um, canvas. So this is a shelf liner that I absolutely love and it leaves a really interesting mark. This is Coastal Escape, another basic stamp that I absolutely love. I find it's so... Um, all of these work well for whatever kind of focal point you're putting on here. So now I'm grabbing the paints. I have light blue permanent and Prussian blue and this yellow green. And it's actually three different brands here. I love this color combination. And the colors that I am using are the colors that I see in the... Uh, collage papers and in my gel prints. So I'm watering it down. I want it fairly watery. I don't want to cover the gel prints that are there. So I'm aiming mostly to paint over the white spots. And I'm just, you know, I've, the brush has gone by the wayside and I'm using my finger and I'm grabbing different colors of paint and blending them as I go. But I'm trying very hard to leave some of that yellow green. I don't want it to get all blue. And again, I will be going around the sides of the canvas as well to get the colors there. Prussian blue is one of my favorite colors. It doesn't come in Liquitec Basics, so I think I usually buy the Grumbacher brand, and I've gone through two tubes of it already. It's just such a wonderful color. So working on a canvas this size, which isn't particularly large, it's really hard to film. If you are happy with the color or you're not sure and you don't want it to blend anymore, stop, give it a dry, and then you can always add more layers of color. This is plastic embroidery, and I'm just using it as a stamp in the Prussian blue to add some darks. And I'll be coming in with stencils and other stamp making tools in either a light or a dark, just to keep adding interest. This is another Crafters Workshop stencil. This one's called Crazy Waves. And there are a couple parts of this that I really like. I like the swirly pattern. And then you're going to see me use the bubbles part, which is a little bit later. And I just go in with adding white and then darker colors until um, I really just am happy with what I see. And I'm using a cut and dry foam, Ranger's cut and dry foam, which is somewhat like um, a makeup sponge, but it seems to last a little bit longer. So I've been playing with that to see. So here's the bubbles part of the stencil. And I absolutely loved how the effect this gave, especially where the canvas ended up. Like you do see some of this and it adds so, so much. So mental note to self to, to use this you know, if I do any other C ones or even other projects. I love that bubble. So the stencil you, you get, it has um, about four different patterns, which is just lovely. It's like four stencils in one.
This is an Art Minds stencil, and I had the seaweed part. I put it in with the lime, you're the yellow green, and then I put it in, I grabbed some metallic, cobalt blue metallic, and I didn't really get the effect that I wanted. If I was doing this again, not that I could create this canvas exactly as it is. Again, here I'm putting in that blue, that metallic blue. I would just skip this step because it didn't really add anything amazing to the final product. But at this time, I wasn't sure exactly which, where I was going. I was just enjoying making a sea glass colored yummy background. Using this collage, starting with collage, collaging of the jelly prints is a technique that I have used and I absolutely love this way of starting off canvases. It just adds so much interest and it is so much fun to do. So I hope you give that a try. Now I'm splattering with white and that will have the overall effect of kind of lightening the background and I want it to be bubbly and under the sea. So I went online and I got some starfish clip art and I got them the size that I wanted and played around with where I wanted them. And now I'm taking my Stabilo All Pencil. This is actually a blue one. I did not want to introduce black to this, so I'm using the blue. You could use a watercolor pencil. And I'm just tracing out these stars. Now you see how they're overlapping? So this took me some time. And from here on in, I've speed up the video quite a bit. I also um, edit out some of it isn't even on video because it just, it was very time consuming. And as you can imagine, I'm trying to see where I had put things. So I keep, keep my templates very close and I put them on sometimes to be sure of what I'm looking at and what I want to do. I'm trying to make sure that the Stabilo Oil Pencil, I'm putting it on dark enough that I can see it afterwards. So as you can see, it's you know you can barely make out the Stabilo All Pencil. So this was this was a bit tricky. Here I am using the float floating acrylic technique, and I'm using mostly Prussian blue. I did grab out the Payne's Gray, and at this stage I liked the Prussian blue better. So basically I am shading around the starfish and there you go. I'm grabbing, see, I'm grabbing that template and putting it back just so I get the shape of it. And I'm also painting the, the, you know, tentacles of the starfish as they wrap around the canvas. And that looks pretty cool. Kind of a close-up of the shading so and again I keep these templates these starfish templates back and you know grab them to help me figure out where everything is supposed to be so I kind of jumped around the canvas doing this one and that one and you know taking a little breaks to rest my eyes. This was very, um, I wouldn't say difficult, but it, it did have its, its moments. And there you can see I'm putting it back again, just so I know it kind of blocks out some of it, so it helps me focus. I think that's what part of it does as well. Because I also want the starfish, as they're overlapping, some to, you know, go under and some to go over. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, what, what do I want to do? How do I want this to look?
I'm using an angle brush to do the float technique. You can use a flat brush and you could also use a smaller angle brush if that's what you prefer. But as I'm doing this, I'm just and it's starting, you know, to see the progress. I'm absolutely in love with what I'm seeing. This is just just looks like such a underwater scene of these these starfish. So any of the supplies that I'm using, the colors as well as the angle brush, uh, I will put a link to those materials in the description box below. And I will also link in the I cards and end cards videos where I show how I've created some of the gel prints or painted papers. I'll also link the, the mixed media technique tag video where I show how I how to float acrylics in the shading technique. So all told, this probably took about four hours. About two of those hours were videoed, and then I've edited that and sped it up down to, you know, roughly 30 minutes or under 30 minutes. But it's very time consuming to do it. It's, it's a slow process. So now that everything's shaded on the outside, I'm doing the float technique with white on the inside of the starfish. But now that I have the outline, this is way easier than doing the blue. And I go around and I add a little bit and then I let it dry, then I come back. You don't like it, take the baby wipe, wipe it off and, and reapply. Putting the white on the inside really somehow just makes the dark on the outside that much darker. And with the float technique, if you're doing it right, it shouldn't look like you've taken a marker and outlined it. It should kind of spread darkest at the, at the edge and then kind of dissipate outward, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to figure out which starfish, how I want this to look, where's white, where's the blue. Now one thing that I, I don't believe I showed, before I did the white, I took a baby wipe and I lightly wiped over all the starfish and I took off the Stabilo All Pencil. The reason being, when I do the white, I didn't want the blue to activate and turn, you know, because I wanted it to stay white. The Stabilo, Stabilo was simply there as a temporary um, tool, but you do want to get that off before you proceed. Also, when I put varnish on this, if I don't take that off, it will reactivate and um, go. So now I'm taking the Prussian blue and really watering it down. Oop. 
I guess I, I started to fill in the areas, but I guess I'll come back to that later. I'm still doing some shading here with the white. And there I go back to coloring in the blue. So it's just very lightly and it's almost like a glaze because I don't want it to be opaque. I still want to see some of those layers that I put in there. And you do see that. This canvas is very mesmerizing. And again, I'm adding a layer of it and then I'm coming back and adding more if I need to. If it looks too dark, I'm taking the baby wipe and, and getting some of it off. It's just kind of a dance between, between all those notions. Using this same technique, what other suggestions do, do you have? What other kind of things can I layer on top of a background and do in a similar fashion? If you got an idea, leave it in the description box below. So now I'm getting out all of the templates and matching them. I'm using this as a mask because I'm going to splatter gold paint. It's me, I need gold on here. So I'm trying to put that, and then of course I move and it shifts a little bit. So I get out the painter's tape and I tape, I actually tape these down so they, they don't move because I didn't, I didn't want any of the gold on the stars. So I just have my gold I think I've gone through two tubes of gold paint as well and I'm just splattering with my fan brush thin down the paint a little bit and if I get too big too much globs you can always dab it out is taking off the masks. I've included some pictures of the final project at the end. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you give it a try. It does. It is time consuming and it is probably harder than you think, but give it a try. Keep practicing. You'll get better. See you next time.